When Voyager was being cast, I was doing a play at the Mark Taper Forum, which is a very prestigious theater here in the L.A. area. And we were only in rehearsals. And I wasn't technically available to get cast in a TV pilot because it would conflict with the play. But did that stop me? Computer, initiate emergency medical holographic program. Please state the nature of the medical emergency. Well, I read the audition scene, and the doctor character is described as colorless, humorless, a computer program of a doctor. That doesn't sound like much fun. I mean, that, I didn't see how that could be a rewarding experience to play. Please state the nature of the medical emergency. Well, I had this conversation with my friend later that night, and she says, no, you're reading the wrong part. You've got to read for Neelix. Neelix is like the great character part in the show. So I read the script, and I liked Neelix a lot. I thought it was very funny. So I had my agent call up and say, no, he doesn't want to read for the doctor, but he'll read for Neelix. So I go in, and I read for Neelix very well. I go in, I do my best, I read, I go home. My agent called and said, it's not going to work out. You didn't get it. And I said, okay, all right. And he said, but they really still want you to read for this other character, the doctor. And I said, look, I, I don't get the joke. I mean, really, I know they want this character to be funny, but he's a computer program. I mean, you know, how could he be funny? Please state the nature of the medical emergency. Why do you always have to say that? All the other actors auditioned for their parts probably four or five times, or at least three times. I'm the only actor who went in, and they'd never heard me read the lines for this character before. And I'm at the big final audition with all the heads of the studio, all the heads of the network, and all the producers of Star Trek, about 35 people. Michael Piller says, you have any questions? I said, no. No, I'll just take a stab at it. And it's fine. So I go and I read it, and I'm, I'm getting them to laugh. I ad-libbed, which you never do on Star Trek. I was never allowed to do that in the seven years after I got the job, but I, I ad-libbed a couple of jokes. And the final line in my audition, I ad-libbed. The last scripted line was, um, I believe someone has failed to terminate my program. And I took a long deadpan look at all of the other people in the room watching me, and I said, I'm a doctor, not a nightlight. And I got a big laugh, and I, on the wave of that laugh, I walked out the door, and I was hired literally hours later. I'm a doctor, Mr. Neelix, not a decorator. I'm a doctor, not a database. I'm a doctor, not a battery. I'm a doctor, not a zookeeper. I'm a doctor, not an engineer. <laughs> My name is Robert Picardo, and for Star Trek fans, there's another character uh, we've all heard of, and it's, a ver it's very similar to my name. And uh, there's actually no significance to this uh, coincidence at all, but I like to think that uh, the way my uh, name first came up with uh, the producers, they were all sitting around lamenting, you know, going, oh, we'll never find another Picard. Re you know, repeating that over and over again, oh, we'll never find another Picard, oh, we'll never find another Picard, oh, and they went, Wait a minute. Picardo. It's just a theory, though. You know. The infuser will keep his oxygen level stable for the next hour or so, but after that, he'll die. His lungs have been removed. The doctor was very unformed, obviously, in the pilot. And I, frankly, bluffed my way through the pilot, not really knowing what I was doing. I didn't quite get the joke. It wasn't until the third episode of the series where Kess comes in to the doctor's office and asks for soil samples. And the doctor goes off on this tirade about how uh, he was designed for emergency medical use only and now every tiny banal medical or scientific need was going to be funneled his way and he was going to be forced to do all these demeaning things in his eyes. I'm creating a hydroponics bay. I was told you could provide me with some nitrogenated soil samples. That's it? I'm sorry if... So it begins. The trivia of medicine is my domain now. Every runny nose, stubbed toe, pimple on a cheek becomes my responsibility. Here he was, the combination of everything that we know about medicine in the 24th century. So he has all of this wealth of knowledge. And yet, anyone, any idiot on the crew can turn him on and off like a light switch. Now that would piss me off. And that's, that's what it did to the doctor. It made him mad. And I think that that was the first major clue, is that he felt, uh, you know, his pride was injured because he was designed for better things.
I am not just a doctor. I've been designed with the information from 2,000 medical reference sources and the experience of 47 individual medical officers. I am the embodiment of modern medicine. I remember when Rick Berman came up to me and told me that this character was going to be very popular. We hadn't premiered yet, and that we'd only shot maybe three or four shows. But apparently they had seen something in the alchemy of what they had created and the, and the humor that they were writing for the character and my performance that, had, that was giving them ideas on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. They were coming up with new story ideas and, and writing um, very humorous things for the characters, say, that went in the direction of, of what the actor they had hired could do. And that was what was so wonderful about The Doctor because he started as such a blank slate that I felt like I was in the very much in the creative process with the writers. They, I could ask them questions, I could, I could make a suggestion and say, 